<laughs> hey folks man this is core and we are back with another from the canopy film show and i'm joined as always with my co-host we got bobby blockbuster yo yo and uh cornelius is not gonna be with us this week man he's having some technical difficulties man so hopefully we can get him on this next show you know what i'm saying but um how you been man i've been doing good man um outside of the fact they're talking about it's gonna snow in a couple of days again you know yeah they said friday going into saturday we got lucky last week that's what i'm saying like, maybe get lucky again listen my, my sledding days are over you know i don't build snowmen no more so i don't, I don't like seeing it it's nice to look at from inside the house but once i'm yeah. out in it no way no i totally hate the snow man oh these this time of year yeah as an adult <laughs> exactly um, but yeah, I got a couple of news stories we can start off with, you know, like we usually do. And um interested mostly about upcoming films or films that got announced. So um, New Line Cinema said they're moving forward with Mortal Kombat sequel. Mm. And this film is going to be written by uh, a Moon, Moon Knight show writer. So um, um, I'm totally not interested in this. Not at all. <laughs> the thing is, the, the um, I don't think they made any money, to be honest, off of the last one. Right. And honestly, I think the release um, route hurt them from having it on um, HBO Max and theaters at the same time. So the thing is, this one probably could turn a profit. You know, the, the, per the franchise is still popular enough. Absolutely. And if they they're not going to release this to HBO Max first, so no. they put it in theaters. They'll probably do good if they keep the budget, you know, modest, you know, like they did on the last film. They'll probably turn a profit, but hated it. And I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you 100. percent Like I, I did not like it at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like they they oversold the trailer and undersold the movie. And then also around the same time frame, we were getting those animated uh, versions of the film as well. The, mm -hmm. the Scorpion's Revenge and, yeah, and which was, they were awesome. Yeah, you know. So um, this one, what, what what else can they do outside of introduce more characters? You know, how mm -hmm. are they really going to make it? You know that much more entertaining so. yeah and um it's kind of interesting that they put uh moon knight scribe on this because moon knight isn't even out i don't even know if that's good and everything else he's attached to seems to be upcoming so i don't even know if this guy being attached is going to improve you know what happens in this film but like i said it's a profitable franchise hey. And I see it makes sense, you know. Not for nothing. I did see the trailers for the Moon Knight Moon Knight show. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm my wife. But then again, the trailers to the other Mortal Kombat look good too. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we'll, well have to wait and see. So my next news is about a film that actually did very well and it was actually pretty good. And Girls Trip 2 mm -hmm. has been confirmed to be going down. And this is confirmed on Good Morning America. They had the uh, producer, Will Packer, on, and he was just talking in general about the um, upcoming film award season. And he mentioned that Girls Trip 2 was in the works. And that was a, like a sleeper hit, man. Yeah. Like, I remember we talked about this on the show, I think, and I, I think I hated, I said I hated the trailer. And I actually went to see it the opening weekend, and I was laughing my yeah. butt off. Like, it was great. And then plus it like kind of springboarded Tiffany Haddish's Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was, was her first was feature good. film, I believe. Um, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I, or at least starring role. I don't, she might have had some cameos, yeah. and man. I'm not too uh, familiar right. with that. But yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to this as well. I was like, like you, I was taken by surprise when I first saw this film. Didn't mm -hmm. didn't really know what to expect, but you know, I, I was highly entertained, and I'm sure this one is not gonna, you know, fall short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's up, mm -hmm. man. So my next one is gonna be. Um, yeah, so we also got news that The Rock um, said that he's going to be attached to another uh, video game film. And it's interesting because he's kind of being um, a little bit secretive about what film that's going to be. And he said it's a franchise that he's played for years in the past, you know? Mm. So I don't know. What do you my mind's just thinking, I'm like, <laughs> damn, what's, what's, a, what's a movie that we haven't had? Uh, what's a game that we haven't had converted yet? Like Contra, that might you know. But then he hasn't been playing that for years. There's no Contra, like um, you know, maybe Mega Man. That one. That, that one, one, one has been announced, but I don't think uh, it's going to be Mega Man. And, and I'm thinking maybe Gears of War or something, something to do with Xbox. Mm, yeah, that's possible. That's too. 
Yeah, it could be. I had something in my mind uh, earlier that, that would probably make sense, but but I'm also thinking, you know, just because of the Xbox connection, he's dealt with them for a while. What about um, Halo? Halo has a series oh, that's about to come oh, out. Okay. And trailers for that look crazy. Um, I'm yeah. exposing the fact that my my game knowledge <laughs> is is kind of limited. You know, so I'm running out of names to bring yeah. off. Who knows what it could be? But honestly, Gears would, would be so dope. If you got him and Bautista like back to back. You know what I'm saying? Like that could be crazy right yeah. there, man. That could be a really interesting you know setup right there. You know? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I don't know. That's all that comes to mind right now <laughs> with, with the rock. But also, I would hate for it to be like Doom Part Two. <laughs> yeah, that part. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but if they gave us another Super Mario Brothers, who, well, who, that's who, coming. Oh, that's they, coming. Well, they have an animated Mario Brothers <laughs> oh, okay. on the way, and I okay. think um, and Chris we did. Pratt is um is going to be. Um, doing the Mario's voice in that okay. film for some reason. Okay. And they got mm -hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog covered, so mm -hmm. yeah, shit. Yeah. But um, that's it. That's all I got. As far as news? <laughs> yeah, as far as news. Hey, what if it's Double Dragon? Yeah, <laughs> nah, yeah. But he ain't playing Double Dragon for years. Actually, the, the first time they, they did that, it wasn't too bad. Or another, what, another reboot of Street Fighter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking it's probably Gears, man, or something like It could be Gears because that's an ongoing game. Yeah. It makes sense. And like I said, the Xbox Rock connection, like The Rock was there when they first announced the very first Xbox to the world. And he's been there ever since, you know, and out for these conferences, man. So. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, my last news is it, is it just popped up on the screen as we're scrolling through this. And I don't know if these things can be considered movies, but but maybe they are um, short films. So Peter Robbins, the voice of Charlie Brown, uh, passed away by suicide um, today. Man. Yeah. Amazing. So actually, never mind. He, he took his life last week. So the families come forward and to the media and saying that, you know, today that they announced that it happened. Wow, hey, rest in peace, man. But those Charlie Brown films, those were epic, dude. And I think they still, you know, hold, you know, captured, you know, public's attention and imagination. Mm -hmm. The um the the the, the Halloween special. I the love them, yeah. That's a big pumpkin one, yeah. One of my favorite ones is the, the river race one, dude. When they when they were really racing down the river. <laughs> then the one where they go to um France or something. That's where they had the uh the Red Baron. Yeah. Yeah, man. Dang, bro. Rest in peace, Peter. Yes, Robert. indeed. Rest in peace. Yeah, let's let's get into these trailers, man. Let's get into these trailers. Trailer time. Let's go for this. So, um, the first one that we got is a is a film called Last Looks, and it's gonna drop for us on February fourth, twenty twenty two, and it's directed by Tim Kirkby, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much it follows a disgraced ex cop that's seeking solace by moving into the woods. But his his quiet life um, gets pretty much upended and uh, gets pulled back into you know the public eye. And um, when he uh, shit, people with ADHD. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, just go, just go yeah. All right. So yeah, so it's a, a, a disgraced ex cop seeks solace by moving to the woods, but his quiet life comes to an end when a private eye recruits him to investigate a murder. So, a private eye, uh, it looks like uh, he's going to be played by Charlie Hunnam. A lot of people know him, Jax from uh, uh, what's it, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. And then you get Mel Gibson, uh, Marina Baccarin, and Dominique Mohagan. Cool. So, yeah, so this one, it, it looks like just like kind of like a quirky comedy crime drama mm -hmm. situation. So, uh, you know, I, I might check it out. I might not. I might let, you know wait to see what y'all have to say about it mm -hmm. um the next one we got is called ghost of the ozarks um it's going to drop for us on february 3rd 2022 and uh, it's directed by matt glass jordan jordan wayne long and it takes place in post-civil war arkansas and a young doctor is mysteriously summoned to a remote town in the Ozarks, only to discover that the utopian paradise is filled with secrets and surrounded by a, myst uh, a, a, a mysterious, menacing, supernatural presence. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I noticed about this was uh, was the cast. You get uh, 
Thomas Hobson, Phil Morris, uh, Tara Perry, David Arquette. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So looks uh, looks interesting. Definitely, um, uh, you know the the atmospheric tone definitely is uh, is, is it's got that like vintage civil civil war time look so you know um and i, I want to say in the trailer they they call it like a horror western mm. so okay yeah you know what i'm saying so to those that, that are into the western uh western films might be right in your wheelhouse um next one we got is a film brought to us by netflix uh and it's called big bug and uh it's going to drop for us on february 11th 2022 uh, directed by Jean Perry uh, Junette, I believe is how you say her last name. Um, but this one looked really interesting to me. Um, very looks very visually appealing, and uh, it's it surrounds a group of bickering suburbanites that find themselves stuck together when an android uprising causes their well-intentioned household robots to lock them in their homes for safety. This house looks crazy though. I'm looking at this trailer, like nah. this, they're doing some cool stuff with this. It, it almost looks like a. It, it looks like how the the tech was predicted to look in the fifties. You know, yes. when you see fifties drawings of what the year two thousand is going to be like, right. and it's colorful like that style. But it, this looks cool. But then when you look at the, like the color schemes and some mm -hmm. of the dress, it kind of reminds me of, of the same like vision we got from Tim Burton from like uh, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, yeah, the color scheme, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's actually good if they can pull yeah. off and it's funny. That's and what I'm saying. This might be all right, dude. Like, it, I'm loving the look and the effects and all that. Yeah, and like you said, the tech just looks really crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. When I first watched this, I feel like it's probably going to hit me the same way as the first time I saw batteries not included. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because it's just it's going to be, you know, visually appealing. And, you know, what I'm saying like the storyline well, looks uh, looks good to me. But um, yeah, so the last one that we're going to uh, that we're going to talk about is a film called Gasoline Alley. Mm -hmm. And it drops for us on February 25th, 2022, uh, directed by Edward Drake. And uh, it's set in the underbelly of Los Angeles, and a man is drawn into a high-profile triple murder, and he needs the assistance um, of these uh, these two cops or two detectives that are kind of trailing him because um, he's a prime suspect. And so he uh, he brings them into into the fold so they can help him uncover this conspiracy that's probably more explosive than any of them could have ever imagined. But looks like a good crime, you know, crime situation going on. And yet again, this one, uh, what stood out to me was was the cast. Uh, we get Devin Sawa, who has just been popping up in movies left and right mm -hmm. over the past like year or two. And then we also get uh, Luke Wilson, Bruce Willis appearance, and then uh, Cat Foster. So, um, looks. I think I'm a chill, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know me and, and how I feel about Bruce Willis lately. Yeah, because he just be dropping these duds, man. And like the only thing, like I just looked at the director Edward John Drake. Mm -hmm. Um, um, uh, seems to be a video director. He did a lot of music videos. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm looking at that and the films he's got is Cosmic Sin starring Bruce Willis and Frank Grillo and uh, Adelaide Kane and he also did Breach. <laughs> Another <laughs> this, film with Bruce Willis. Whoever wrote this wiki is shady as hell because it said he also <laughs> wrote and executive produced a low budget flop Breach um, starring Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bro, I'm not having to, like it doesn't seem like a, I'm gonna have you gotta have tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know him and Bruce Willis was connected, but yeah, yeah. like, you know, but the trailer looks it looks a little like high out of team, so you know, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But you know, what I'm saying, yeah. So outside of that, we um, that that's it for trailers for uh, for now. <laughs> All right, that's what's up, man. Let's get into these reviews, man. I honestly, I got one. I'm, I'm gonna talk about two films um today, just. Be just to get it out there, you know, give y'all some content. Um, the first one, I really, really like. Um, the second one, I definitely feel like I got to, you know, do another watch on it. But I will explain, you know, some of the stuff that I thought was um, was good in it. So the film we're going to bring up is, is actually from 2020. And um, the interesting part about it, I was going through the Voodoo. They always have a sale. And this thing showed up on the, on the um, list, on the menu for the, it was five bucks. I was like, well, hmm. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, all right, 
the trailer hooked me, man. So pretty much um, the premise is I can't beat unless you tell it to. It's pretty much the, tr the premise is two mysterious siblings find themselves at odds over care for their frail and sickly younger brother. And they show this in the trailer. It comes to find out the brother is really sickly and frail. He, they're, they're, they're his caregivers. And it's, it's, it's really interesting how frail he is. They don't really explain what he has or what his condition. You just know he's sick. But as the trailer shows us, they've been feeding this kid blood. Mm. So that comes into play. And what made this interesting, you know, at least the way the trailer presented it to me, they it's got to be human blood. <laughs> and the brother and sister have been going out and interacting in the world. And every now and then they've got to kill somebody in order to drain their blood to bring back to their brother to keep him alive and it's interesting he's not it, he is it seems like a vampire kind of story but he doesn't exhibit typical vampire traits it doesn't seem this thing where he's got this crazy bloodlust or he possesses extra powers or something mm -hmm. like that but he does you know he doesn't react well to the sun so there's that aspect but what stood out to this film to me is um, the emotional impact that it had man because like the two characters out of dichotomy they love their brother but it, it, you know, as the trailer shows, the, it seems like the brother, mainly, you know, the, the brother's brother is having the hardest time dealing with this. You know, basically, they've got to kill people to keep their brother alive. And, and, and he starts to feel a way about it. And, I, and it's interesting because that becomes kind of the... Um, in this film, that becomes the conflict mainly, you know, and you're just like... And, and I think they do a good job watching this happen. This thing is very low budget, directed by... Jonathan uh, Quartas, and I think this might be his um, feature debut. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, 2020 Colombian American filmmaker from Miami, and they, they does he does a good job with this. I would definitely be interested in seeing this guy get more work in the future. Um, as I'm looking here, he also did a film called The Horse and the Stag, A Name Without a Place. That's always on here. I don't know if these are short films or whatever. Um, they seem to be older. Um, yeah, he's got some other older films under his belt, but but this thing, like, it, it worked for me, you know? It's, it's only 90 minutes, so it's not terribly long. It is a slower, methodical, um, you know, film, and the scenes, you know, they are allowed to breathe and air out, but then there's also some interesting stuff as they're out and about in the real world, and, and there's an interesting thing, because um, the sister, she's a waitress, and there's points where they cross people and they're sizing them up, you know. Like, oh, wow. Sometimes, you know. It's like grocery it, shopping. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes if you come across with the wrong attitude, then that makes it easier for you to be you know, put on this list of, of you might get clipped, man. And even that, sometimes they're struggling with that. That goes wrong. Um, I, I just thought it was an interesting point of view, man, you know. And it, and it, it was a solid, um, you know, watch for me, you know. Go, yeah, I'm gonna definitely check that out. Yeah, check it out. It's called uh, My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To. Stuff, you know? all, right. <laughs> all right, that's so, so, yeah, so, so, so my, my, oh, my, my first film, um, I, I, I found scrolling through Shutter, it's called uh, Death Valley, and uh, it, it dropped for us on uh, December 9th, 2021, so still technically new enough, you know, to, to still be some kind of relevant. Um, it was directed by uh, Matthew Ninneber, and pretty much it, it follows two uh, mercenaries or hired guns, however you want to call it, um, with nothing to lose that are hired to rescue a bioengineer imprisoned, imprisoned in a Cold War bunker. And um, pretty much once they get into this, you know, ominous uh, facility, they find themselves in a fight for their lives when they come under attack from an unknown and deadly creature. Obviously, a creature that was created by the scientists that feel the need to have to do their secret experiments in an underground Cold War bunker. That's a lot of red flags mm -hmm. with, with, with that going on. But um, I, I'm not going to cook this film like on high heat. But um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what we'll, we'll, we'll say is this: it's um, 
Wow. It's 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 your generic version of um, an approach or a, a reimagining of what we would get from Alien or Predator. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those films were done great. They were excellent in 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 in, in many ways. This one, um, you could tell that it was just kind of you know listening to that soundtrack and then trying to you know recreate mm -hmm. a dance. You know what I mean? Um, what I will say is you know it's it's cool. It's it's a short film. It's a quick watch 91 minutes and you know one thing it does have in its favor is it starts fast and it tries to just like really push the intensity level um for the tone that the film is trying to to, to carry throughout um but outside of that uh you get a couple cool little action sequences like you know you know within the first half an hour or so there's like some you know gunplay in the jungle and stuff and um for the most part excuse me, it was done pretty well um the camera angling was was a little you know hit or miss at times but i mean it, like i say if you want to run through this film with a fine tooth comb you're gonna find more flaws than goods so um yeah, all in all i was uh i was i was entertained with the with the the action sequences we got from the gunfighting and um outside of that you know the acting is you know it's it's <laughs> it's subpar I'm at best. Lie, bro. Like, like I tried to watch this, and that was the one thing that, that threw me off of this. Yeah. Like the trailer looked good, like you said, the locale, the premise I even rock with, but but there was something that was so bad about that, and the, the, like it just turned me off completely, man. Like yeah. just the way that they were coming at this, I was like, man, at least try. Yeah, please. and they're supposed to be like <laughs> like try. like best buds went on all these missions together, and they just they, their conversation was awkward. Like they mm -hmm. seem like, like how do y'all know each other? But you seem like you don't know each other, you know. Like so, the acting felt, uh, like I say, it was subpar and it was, it was felt forced, you know. Um, but none of those reasons are really what got me to finish this film. What did was, you know, uh, the special effects mm -hmm. and mainly the character design. Uh, the or I'm sorry, the creature design. The, the, you know, the 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 amount of energy and effort that they put into the look of this creature or these creatures that you know we um we see um as the film goes on was really cool like even though you know you, you can look at them and you might see little hot spots or or nuances of other creatures that you've seen in other films um that fall into the same genre this this one still kind of had a, a look Mm -hmm. kind of of its own you know what i'm saying and um it it, it was creepy and then like they it kind of I, I don't i don't know like it, it felt like even though it looked so monstrous it still kind of felt um slightly human in a sense which i think that was that was a cool approach as well but um other than that you know that's that's like i said that's what really got me to watch this until the credits rolled other than that it's just you know it's an a for effort film you know they, they tried to do um some things to make it create its own lane but it just didn't didn't really hit the mark um it's b rate at best and um it's it's one you know like i said if if, if you have 90 minutes of free time it's a fast watch. It starts <laughs> fast, it ends fast, and you know, like I said, there's some there's some cool little effects that you'll see. Um, but if, like I said, if you if you really dissect this film, you're probably gonna find more negative things to say about it than good. It, it, it got me immediately, dude. And <laughs> like, cause I mean, the, the creature does look good, and you actually yeah. see this mug like early. Mm -hmm. But the rest, it was just so hard. I was like, I was like, I got ninety minutes of this. I don't know if I can do it. Like, yeah. like it was just messing me up. But it's out there, man. You know, if you want to check it out. Um, so my next film, um, I'm talking about um The Tragedy of Macbeth, starring Denzel Washington. It's got Francis McDormand, um, Catherine Hunter, We've also got Corey Hawkins, uh, Brendan Gleason pops up in this. Um, this cast is so stacked. Brian Thompson, you know his face from films, even if you don't know that name. But this thing is stacked, man. It's crazy. Also, I'm gonna um, give a shout out. I think it was Nancy Daly, I believe. I'm not 100 percent sure, man. They're, they're like, they're, it's the thing about this film. It's shot in black and white. Um, the thing that bugs me out immediately, it annoyed me, was that they didn't shoot this in the full screen aspect ratio. It's shot in like a four three or a square. 
ratio, which boggles my mind, dude. I know you want to give it this classic look and all that, but you're cutting out like a third of the picture. Like, fill the screen up. You're taking the time to make these sets and make these environments. Fill my screen up with that, dude. We're not, you know, we're not back in the 80s right. watching on a tube TV. You know what I'm saying? But aside from that, um, I will say that this is one that I got to go back and rewatch. Um, I will say, like, the, the production design and all that is so trippy. This thing is crazy, but it is very Shakespearean. It's not this, it's not the the nineties version of Romeo and Juliet. It's straight Shakespearean. Thou art talking uh, a bit like this. Come hither. You know? uh, <laughs> and, but but it, it works, man. It's it's not it, like it, it's one of these things. If you got the time to sit back, I think you can find joy with it. And and if you got the patience to sort through that, you know, there there, there are a lot of real um, Shakespeare fans that'll probably gravitate this, to this a lot more easier, but for someone like me, got to take it in doses, and, and yep. that's how I had to watch it because of the the density of the language. But after a while, th there's a rhythm that develops with it, and you, you you start getting used to listening to it, and it's actually really good watching this cast do that, man. Like Denzel is probably like like I, there's a couple outings I didn't, I didn't like roman j israel I wasn't the biggest fan of equalizer too you know but right but he shines here man he kills it and also francis mcdormand because i think traditionally what i've seen in the past of uh interpretations of the story they are younger actors you know and this is like some treachery going on he's still trying to hold on his crown and it makes more sense him being older and then being older that someone would actually be trying to knock him off his mm. position. Mm -hmm. And and the thing that stands out to me, man, this thing is bloody as hell, bro. Like I, was, I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. Like the treachery, man. Like, like once it once it starts going down, they they are man, this is this is blood splatter and and, 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 like, and it's crazy because part of it too, I think Macbeth is going mad at times and right and and Denzel is doing a good job in those moments, man. There's that moment where he's just in the hall by himself. He, he he's in a dinner party and he just starts wilding out. <laughs> and then then he like he, they they send him back to the room to like uh, it's like you know he goes in the back to but he's he's in the back he's still wilding. <laughs> and by then everyone's came from the dinner room and they're peeking through the door and he's out there like oh, like it, it's so great, man. <laughs> you don't got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, pretty much, man. I swear to God, that's that's that's. <laughs> it, is, it is, man. But 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 like I said, man, if you're a patient viewer, you give it the time. I think it's worth your time, man. It's different, which which I appreciate more than anything, man. I love when people take risks. I appreciate that effort more than whether it comes out good or bad. I like the fact that you at least try something and they really try something. It's so good, dude. It's, 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 it, it, it definitely stood out. It's one of the ones like. Like I said, I'm, I'm mixed on it because I, I watched it in pieces, but now that I see how the conclusion is going to go, like, I think maybe in the next week or two, I'm going to sit down and just let it all unfold, you know, all at once. You, you know, definitely saying? check this out. And isn't it on, um, it's on Apple TV Plus. Apple TV, there yeah, you go. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's exclusive there. So it's okay. about an hour of uh, 45 minutes. It's a drama thriller. I just wish that they filled my screen up, man. That that so bothers me being a home viewer with this big ass TV and these big black it's squares. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that should not be that either, man, bro. That should not be happening these days, man. Like, I know you're trying to get this nostalgia, but man, some people wasn't born back then, bro. Right. For their whole life, TV's been full. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, come on, man. Stop being. Stop playing around, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm a um. I'm gonna make this one quick. Uh, like I said, I saw a lot of duds, uh, a lot of duds this week. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to give them no air time. They were just not that disinteresting or unentertaining. So uh, we'll save that for another one. But probably the most interesting thing I watched this week, well, I found on YouTube for the free 99. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called The Heart of, well, Heart of Batman. And pretty mm -hmm. much it's a documentary that, um, is focused on the the Batman the animated series, you know. So you get in depth interviews with the uh, the animators, uh, Paul Demi and Bruce Tim, um, various uh, creators. They talk about um, all kinds of stuff, not just with this particular cartoon, but like the the upbringing of Warner Brothers Animation, how they mm -hmm. started with Tiny Toons, and oh, you know. 
things like that. But, you know, the main focal point is the Batman the animated series. And I mean, like I said, uh, I was a big fan of this uh, of this cartoon. Um, it's probably up there as one of my top five favorites. I mean, X-Men was, it was good, man. It, it was favorite. Yeah. Honestly, if you think about what went into this thing, this thing definitely is probably in the top five of just animated just series ever. ever. Yeah, and, yeah, and the main thing that stood out about it was the animation style, the look of this, this, uh, you know, this this series. And they get into all that, like you know, what kind of approaches they took, what kind of resistance they ran into, mm -hmm. and you know, um, another thing uh, that was really cool about this series you know is like you look at the like at the in-depth approach that they took into like the story building you know watching this series like each episode was like a small movie you know what i'm saying and what they did with the villains you know recreating you know some of the the, the most obsolete or overlooked villains and, and giving them almost like a, a new home you know like what they did with mr freeze mm -hmm. was amazing you know what i'm saying he was almost like a joke before this animated series and then you know i'm sure everyone has figured this out by now but this was the batman series that gave us harley quinn she was non-existent before this before this came out so they you know they get into all that stuff um yeah that's crazy that she never had any comic book legacy but now is probably one of the most popular you know dc comics characters exactly based off yeah. of this tv show based off this you know um they also give big shout outs to tim burton like how his 1989 vision of batman highly influenced this cartoon and how you know the steps that they had to take not only to re you know like you know step in their own lane but then almost reinvent the character from all the other batman series is series that preceded it you know what i'm saying like when you yeah. think of the adam west one i mean it was campy it was fun it was you know pow zap this one was way darker and you know what was than, about this one like for this to be animated they really emphasized the detective aspect like, yeah. like he was out there really sleuthing and figuring out puzzles and, and you know what was cool too every now and then you would get an episode that might have spanned uh or an arc that spanned like two or three episodes yeah I remember clayface he Man, was that clay dope. episode was dope dude like, yeah that was my nice. favorite was when they gave us when they introduced us to mr freeze it was Free. called uh it was uh the, the heart of ice or something no they, they, well, well mr freeze came in but then they made a movie with mr freeze remember um, oh that was so, the, um Phantas sub zero or, or something the, the phantasm oh, or, yeah. That's the phantasm. That was that was the phantasm. No, it was called like a Mr. Freeze Sub Zero or something like that. Let me see. Let me see. Let me look at a lot. Batman animated, and this was probably going because um, I animated. got the mask of the phantasm. Yeah, he's not in that. Oh, okay, so it was yeah. All right, it's, so it's some, yeah, all right, yeah, you're right. Zero. Phantasm, and then and yeah, you're right, and it was like I think the Sub Zero. That's where. Um, Damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, that was the first um animated movie mm -hmm. based off of this series. But yeah, you're right. The uh, Sub-Zero the, thing was a different. I want to say this did this one did Mask of the Phantasm come out before the series? Yeah, Batman, Mr. Freeze, Sub Zero. So they were both animated. So mm -hmm. I think Phantasm came first. That came, was, out, um, came out first, yeah. That was um 93, and then Mr. Freeze came out in 98 okay yeah and yeah and, and the show spanned from um i want to say it was what 92 to 94. Mm -hmm. yeah 92 to 94. It's crazy that 94 but see syndication kept it kept this name fresh because they just kept running it over and over which probably led to them putting out this mr Freeze yeah because it so late you know what i'm saying in 98. yeah it ran uh, yeah it ran from 1992 to 95 lasting 85 episodes mm -hmm. and then yeah like you said with the publication and everything it started off on Cause, fox cause, 5 and then was then, slumped over to then you had that overlap where they do the block where the, remember the superman anime series yeah. came, and then they had that crossover which was crazy that was still one of the craziest yeah. two episodes ever with superman and batman crossed over and they was teaming up yep that shit was hard yep. dude. but yeah man i mean Dude, anyone who was a fan of this of this series, you know, I highly recommend watch it. It's just it was very informative. It was interesting. Gave a lot of insight and perspective just to what created this 
awesome, you know, groundbreaking animation mm -hmm. series. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And another thing, just while we're talking about the likes and dislikes, I love the look of the atmosphere. They they created uh, what they called it was dark deco. Yeah, it was art deco style on the buildings. Yeah. yeah, it's like because they wanted it to look like it was taking place in the 40s, even though it still yeah. had modern technology. And I thought they did a really good job just setting the atmosphere and, you know, like I said, the animation style, creating the characters and everything. And it was just cool to get an in-depth look on what mm -hmm. really made that that motor turn and gave us, you know, the the end product that we all know and love. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's dope. I think this came out, well, at least on here, the date is January. 2018. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, so they might they, they might have put it on here at this time because there's also a live broadcast on the YouTube. So maybe that one has a different date. Um, yeah, so there's one up here. Uh, yeah, there's two. Um, I think one was like a live stream, so I think that's yeah. the older version. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it initially mm -hmm. dropped 2018, but like I said, it's on YouTube. Um, just regular yeah, YouTube. Don't be kidding. I was like, man, this is that's the best money I never <laughs> spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's it, man. I'm gonna get out of here, folks, man. Not gonna hold you. Corey, aka Monk, you catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram, follow the podcast from Canopy on Twitter, and at From the Canopy on Instagram. <laughs> Always get close to messing those two up. And you can email us from the canopy pod at gmail.com. And remember, man, this is no longer the movie massacre. It's from the canopy film show. It has its own YouTube channel, or you can subscribe to from the canopy network channel and get everything you know yes indeed and this is bobby blockbuster aka bobby blockbuster and uh you can catch me on instagram bobby blockbuster 118 See, it's real easy for my delivery because i only got one <laughs> <laughs> all right folks man we'll all ask you. Peace. Right. <laughs>